Hello. Hi. It's Sunday again. Mm, they come around very quickly, don't they? Oh, what day was it yesterday? Do you remember? It was only yesterday. It was Halloween, wasn't it? Did you do anything for Halloween? It's all a bit different this year, isn't it? With lockdown, not being able to go trick or treating. I hope you remember when you go trick or treating and next year when you do it, I hope you remember that there are some people who get quite scared and upset when people are knocking on their doors. Some people that are old or maybe not very well and they get a little bit frightened. So just remember that when you go to or treating. Just be a, a little bit careful about where you go with your friends, okay? Well, where did Halloween come from? What's it all about? Well, the word means All Hallows Eve. Can you see how it got squashed together? All Hallows Eve, Halloween. So we know what the word Eve means, don't we? We know the word Eve means the day before. Christmas Eve is the day before Christmas Day and New Year's Eve is the day before New Year's Day. So Halloween, All Hallows Eve, is the day before All Hallows Day. What's that then? What's All Hallows Day? Well, another word for All Hallows Day, another phrase I should say for All Hallows Day, is All Saints Day. Hmm. It's a day when we remember all the saints. It's a, a big celebration day in the church. Another day that we get to have a party. Yay! Ooh, what are saints though? What are they? Well, usually we think of saints as people who have done something amazingly brave for their Christianity. So they were Christians, they were followers of God, they lived the lives that Jesus said we should live and yet they had to be brave at some point in their life to stand up for that. And some of them even got killed because they believed in God and because they lived the life Jesus said we should live. Um, some of them are what we call patron saints. Do you know what a patron saint is? A patron saint is normally somebody that's got um, something connected to them. So they are the patron saint of a place or a group of people or a, an activity. So some of the examples you might know, you might know Saint Francis. Have you heard of Saint Francis? Saint Francis was the patron saint of animals. Yeah. And then um, Saint Priscilla. You may not have heard of Saint Priscilla, but um, in the adult service for the Salvation Army this week, I'm talking about Saint Priscilla. And she was the patron saint of marriage. Yeah, patron saint of marriage. And then there's Saint Agatha. Now, Saint Agatha, this is a, um, a very topical saint at the moment with everything that's going on. She was the patron saint of nurses. Yeah, nurses have got their own patron saint. And then the last one, um, Saint Valentine. Uh, you can guess what Saint Valentine is the patron saint of. Patron saint of lovers. Mm, people who are in lovey love. Yes, that's Saint Valentine. And um, because in Wales, we've got one, haven't we? Saint David. Aye, patron saint of Wales is Saint David. And you probably know some more patron saints. So some of the saints have their own special days, don't they? So Saint David's Day is March the 1st. But you see, there are 365 days in a year. There are more than 365 saints. Here comes Taffy, he wants to listen to Sunday School. So if there are more saints than there are days in the year, they can't all have their own day. So what the church decided was that there would be a special day called All Saints Day when we would remember all of the saints, especially the ones that don't have 
their own special day. Here's a little video that explains exactly the same thing to you, but it's in the form of a clever little poem. Should we have a little look at the video? Halloween is fun for its candy you seek. But did you know it's not the only holiday this week? All Saints Day falls on the 1st of November, and we celebrate it together as a way to remember the saints of the church, both famous and not, for their example of faith and for loving a lot. What is a saint, you might ask your pastor? But I'll answer that question. It's probably faster. Saints are people who love God and others. They see everyone on earth as their sisters and brothers. We give thanks for those who have died this last year. We say their names. We smile. We might shed a tear. And as they sing God's praises, we can join in the chorus by doing for others what the saints have done for us. Be kind. Forgive. Tell other people about the love of God that makes you want to shout, God is great. God is good. God always comes through just like the Bible said God would. So enjoy your candy, but don't forget to say, along with Trick or Treat, Happy All Saints Day. So that video talked about people who have died over the last year. So does that mean that some of the people who died over the last year and were friends of God are going to be called Saint something and have their own special celebration day? Well, no. But what that little video explains to us is the way in which the church now celebrates All Saints Day. So there are two types of saints that we think about on All Saints Day. First of all, there are those saints who are called Saint something and have their own special day. But there's also the people who we have known who have died and, and gone back to be with God, who were God's people when they're on earth, they were followers of Jesus and they lived their lives the way that Jesus said we should live our lives. And maybe they helped us to learn something about God. So we call them our saints, the, the good people of God that we've had in our lives who sadly are, are not with us anymore. So they gave us a good example, didn't they, of how to live like God. And that's why we're grateful. We're grateful that they taught us how to live as God's people. And we want to do that. So how do we live the way God wants us to? Well, there's a very, very famous bit in the Bible, a story called the Sermon on the Mount, which is a story about where Jesus went up a mountainside to teach his disciples and a big, big crowd of people that had all gathered around him to teach them how God wanted them to live their lives. And part of that, a very famous part of that, is a list a list of the type of people that he said, these are the people that God blesses. These are the people that makes God's heart really happy. And these are the people who themselves can be really happy knowing that God loves them. And he gave this list of people and it was a totally different list of people to the sort of people that the society would have said would have been the happiest people. I mean, like today, back then, people would have said, well, the happiest people are going to be the rich people or the famous people or the powerful people. And the list that Jesus taught turned all of that upside down because Jesus was saying, God's kingdom doesn't think the way your kingdom does. It's a different type of person that God makes happy. And that little teaching that Jesus gave, we gave it a special name. We call it the Beatitudes. Let's watch another little video, which is all about Jesus teaching us the Beatitudes. Let's have a little listen to it. God's story. 
the Sermon on the Mount. So part of God's story is about a sermon Jesus gave on the side of a mountain and what he did afterwards. And it goes like this. One day, when Jesus saw crowds gathering to hear him teach or see him do miracles, he went to the side of a mountain. It was near the Sea of Galilee, across from a place called Capernaum. From there, he gave a message all about God's kingdom and his love. We call this message the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus started by explaining who would get blessings or favor from God. He said the most blessed people are those who are poor, sad, or humble. He said God shows favor to people who are just or treat others fairly, and people who are merciful or show love to those who don't deserve it. He said the people who are pure, who bring peace, or who get hurt for doing right will be rewarded for their actions in heaven. In other words, the people who love others, even when it makes them seem weak or unimportant on earth, are like heroes in God's kingdom. Anyway, Jesus went on to explain that when we believe in and follow him, it's our job to show everyone else who he is by loving them. That means going out of our way not only to comfort and help our friends, but also forgive people who hurt us, love our enemies, and give to people in need. The thing is, Jesus didn't just talk about love, he showed it all the time. In fact, right after giving this sermon, Jesus spent the rest of the day helping everyone he met. First, as Jesus came down from the mountain, a man with a skin disease called leprosy knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Usually, no one wanted to be around people with leprosy. But Jesus touched him and said, I am willing, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Then, when Jesus arrived in Capernaum a bit later, a soldier said to him, Lord, my servant is in terrible pain. Right away, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The officer said, just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Jesus told him, because you believed, it has happened. The officer's servant was healed. A little later, Jesus arrived at his disciple Peter's house. Peter's mother-in-law was there too, sick in bed with a high fever. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left. Later that evening, many other people who were demon-possessed or sick came to see Jesus. He brought relief to all of them. At the end of the day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm came out of nowhere. Waves began crashing into the boat. The disciples realized that even though they were in the middle of a giant storm, Jesus was fast asleep. They shouted, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he told the wind and waves to stop. They did. That day, Jesus taught a lot of people how to love and showed them what love looks like. Whenever somebody took their sickness or pain or fear to Jesus, he helped them. Everybody who met Jesus got to experience his love. And when we love like Jesus, everyone who meets us can feel his love too. And that's the story of the Sermon on the Mount. So can you see why when people listened to the way Jesus taught and, and listened to what he was saying, they could see that he was being really radical. This was a really different way of thinking. It's not, you know, you're not going to get happiness by being famous, rich and powerful. You're going to be happy if you are a peaceful person, if you are a person who tries to do good things, if you're a person, sometimes a person who doesn't have very much in life, because then you kind of appreciate everything God gives you. Those are the people that are often so much happier than the people that you would expect to be happy. Let's now, let, let's read those verses together. Let's do it together. So the Bible reading is Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Jesus saw the crowds who were there. He went up on a hill and sat down. His followers came to him. Jesus taught the people and said, 
those people who know they have great spiritual needs are happy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Those who are sad now are happy. God will comfort them. Those who are humble are happy. The earth will belong to them. Those who want to do right more than anything else are happy. God will fully satisfy them. Those who give mercy to others are happy. Mercy will be given to them. Those who are pure in their thinking are happy. They will be with God. Those who work to bring peace are happy. God will call them his children. Those who are treated badly for doing good are happy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. People will say bad things about you and hurt you. They will lie and say all kinds of evil things about you because you follow me. But when they do these things to you, you are happy. Rejoice and be glad. You have a great reward waiting for you in heaven. People did the same evil things to the prophets who lived before you. So when you read that list, can you think of the sorts of people that we would think about as saints the sorts of people who were really good examples in our lives. Let's have a song. Oh, I know a song just about the Beatitudes, yeah, and it's got some really good actions to it as well. So get yourself a bit of space, bop along, use the actions, sing the song. Let's have a bit of a sing. God blesses those who are poor, theirs is the kingdom. God blesses those who mourn, they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, they will inherit the earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus went up to the mountainside and God blesses the merciful, they will be shown mercy. God blesses whose hearts are pure, they'll see God. God blesses those who work for peace, they will be called children of God. God blesses the persecuted, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus went up to the mountainside and really good lives for God. People who were, were very kind and very loving, people who were humble, who were friendly to everybody. And I'm guessing some of you were a bit young, so so far in your lives you haven't lost too many people. But I'm sure your parents or your grandparents would be able to come up with a, a list of people that they knew. Maybe when they were children or even as adults, who lived those really, really good lives and were a really good example to everybody. Well, I want to show you something that you can do to honour those people. Now, 
with Halloween, you may have had lots of decorations up and we know the shops sell all the Halloween decorations, don't they? So we are gonna make a decoration for All Saints Day and it's really easy to do. Can you use the one that I've done? Now I'm gonna see if I can get this so you can all see it. Ooh. Right, so essentially it's a twig from my garden and I put it in a vase so it can stand up and then I've got these leaves, leaves cut out of pieces of paper. Now I've gone for different colours, okay, and the different colours reminds me a bit of autumn, which is what's going on outside, isn't it? Now I'm lucky, I've got trees in my garden and with all the winds that we've been having recently, there were lots of twigs on the ground. Now you may not have trees near your house, but maybe you can go on a little walk later once the wind has died down a bit and see if you can find any of these um, nice twig branchy things like this. And then what I've done, can you see that the leaves cut out of the paper and then they're, they're on little bits of, I put them on wool, you can put them on string, whatever. And you put names of people on there, people who aren't with us anymore, but who gave us such a good example of how to live the way God wants us to live. And that we're kind of saying thank you to God for them. So this is like a, a bit of a thank you tree, isn't it? Now I have put, I've put Jesus on you because of all the examples, Jesus is, is the best example for all of us, isn't he? And I've, I've just put a few on so far. So I, you can probably see that when it's upside down. My dad, my dad's not with us anymore, but my dad was a lovely man. And he lived a very loving, kind and, and wonderful life. So I put my dad on there. I've got my my Auntie Anne. Can you see that through the branches? There we go. Now, my Auntie Anne was the first person that took me to Sunday school when I was five years old. She was my Sunday school teacher. Um, and Auntie Anne, when she had been a child, she had caught um, a, 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 an infection, an illness that we don't see these days, thankfully. Um, but it meant that she couldn't walk properly for the rest of her life. And you would have thought that would have made her maybe a bit sad, but my Auntie Anne was the happiest person you would ever meet. And she was always, she liked singing hymns and she loved going to chapel. Um, and like I say, she was my first Sunday school teacher. And then Joanna, now Joanna wasn't much older than me. Um, and she was, my, probably one of my last Sunday school teachers when I was a teenager um, and she used to run our youth group and she was a, a lovely Christian and a really good example to me and when I was having a bit of trouble um, with my friends at one stage Joanna really really helped me and sadly even though she wasn't much older than me she's not with us anymore either so this is my tree of my saints the people that I am so grateful to God that he put them in my life because they have given me a really good example of how we should live our lives the way God wants us to. So on All Saints Day, you can do this, pot with something in. I've put these, these glass bead things in, but you can put whatever you want that's going to keep the twig in there, the twig, and then the nice leaves. Cut them out of white paper if you haven't got coloured, it doesn't matter and then put the names of the people on there who you or maybe your parents or your grandparents, people that they knew that they want to say thank you to God for. And it's like a little prayer tree, isn't it? Saying thank you. So should we have a prayer now? That sounds like a good idea to me. Let's have a prayer. Dear Father God, we thank you on All Saints Day that you put amazing people in our lives, people who showed us how to be good and kind people who showed us that happiness isn't coming to us from the things that we buy or the things that we have but the best happiness true happiness comes from knowing you and knowing that we are loved so we thank you for those people and as we grow up god we'd like to be that sort of person for someone else so help us to live the right life and to remember that when Jesus was around, he taught us how to live that life. So help us to remember to read our Bibles, to talk to you in prayer and to live our best lives possible. 
Thank you, God, for all you do. Amen. Amen. So, you've got a new day to celebrate that maybe you didn't used to celebrate before. Another chance for a glass of pop and a slice of cake, I think. Mmm. Happy All Saints Day. I'll see you next week. Bye.